Proctor's Ledge. And I'll tell you about that in just a minute, but let me tell you a little bit about what we've done here in Salem. Um, we did a little history and hauntings tour. It was cool. We had a, a guy, he did a great job. Henry walked us around and showed us a lot of the sites of the city and gave us a lot of the history of the city. Um, now, Salem is older than Boston. It goes back to as early as 1626. I think it actually became Salem in, in around 1629 when the Puritans arrived here. But it was an earlier settlement even than Boston, which was 1630. And of course, um, in 1692, you have the very famous, famous Salem witch trials. And Salem has always had kind of a an awkward, uncomfortable relationship with its own history because, of course, you have this terrible event uh, with the death of deaths of about 25 people um, in relation to the Salem witch trials. You have 19 who are hung. You have Giles Corey who was crushed. And you have another five who die in prison, a couple hundred who are imprisoned. And um, very soon after it happened, uh, the, the, the town really tried to forget what had happened here, uh, understandably. And it really... Um, is only revived from time to time throughout history as being remembered and never really here remembered fondly. That all starts to change, interestingly enough, um, in uh, the 19, I think it was 1970, if I remember right, the TV show Bewitched um, had had a fire at their studio in Los Angeles, and so they had to find another place to film, and they decided to do eight episodes in Salem. And that's kind of what revived interest in Salem and also sort of put a different spin on the whole idea of witches and witch trials with the popularity of that show and then a renewed interest in Salem. And ever since then, especially as we got into the 1980s, it started to become more and more popular as a place for people to visit. And if you come here now, like we are in October, it is all decked out. Um, it's, it's maybe not really my style for vacation. It was interesting to come here, but I'm not really into the whole kitschy sort of, you know, Disneyland-esque uh, nature of things here in Salem. But you have a lot of really amazing shops and restaurants and things to see, um, historical things that are more along my side of things, and then also all that other stuff. Now, there is an old cemetery and there's a memorial that was constructed there in the 1990s. And it's interesting that Elie Wiesel, who, of course, was a Holocaust survivor, a very famous one who wrote the, the, the great book about his experiences called Night, um, he actually speaks at that. And the, the reason for that is that he's, he was trying to shed light on what happens when we allow our, ourselves to, I guess, turn on our neighbors and uh and forget about our, our humanity and and so it's interesting i think with that and that's again all part of the whole there's a branch there it's all part of the whole issue that that salem kind of has with its own history and because of that a lot of things were forgotten for example they never really knew exactly where um the the 19 people who were hanged where they were buried um or where their uh their um execution took place until very recently um, there was a historian about 100 years ago who did some research and got an inkling that it was right here in this part of town, about three miles from downtown, in an area that's known as Proctor's Ledge. Of course, John Proctor was one of those who died in the Salem Witch Trial. And then in the last 10 or 15 years is when historians really have actually confirmed that this was the location. And there's now a memorial here. It's in sort of an interesting spot right next to a Walgreens and across the street from somebody's house. And, and a lot of this area is actually made up of people's houses as well up on this hill, people's yards and that. But they believe that it was right here that um, the hangings took place. And again, this is just something in the last few years that has been realized. They still have not found exactly for sure um, where the bodies are buried. And a lot of that is because you have all this stuff that's been built around and on top of it here, but they believe that it was right here in this area. So even though there's a memorial down in the downtown cemetery in Salem, um, that's not the location of where the, uh, the victims of the Salem witch trials were buried. Now, one other really cool thing that we did today that I can't uh, fail to, to talk about is we drove over to Marblehead, which is right by Salem, just across uh, this little uh, bay, I guess you'd call it, um, harbor area. Uh, anyway, 
Marblehead is a place that I, I've been teaching my students about a man by the name of John Glover for many years now. And John Glover um, was, was someone who fought in the American Revolutionary War. And he's not just anybody. Um, John, Mar or John Glover and his uh, fishermen from Marblehead, Massachusetts, they're the ones who, of course, very famously rode George Washington across the Delaware for the Battle of Trenton back and forth multiple times that night. And of course, being fishermen, they knew how to do this and they could do this throughout the entire night as exhausted as they were and then still marched to Trenton to fight, in the, the marched the 10 miles to Trenton to fight the next morning. Um, so John Glover was the leader of this. He was the one that was in charge of the crossing and coordinated all of that effort. It's not the only time that he... Uh, was important to Washington's army, though, but because months earlier, when Washington's army was trapped um, on Long Island, it was John Glover under the cover of a miraculous fog, and and John Glover and his fishermen who rowed Washington to safety, at least temporary safety, across the East River into Manhattan. So those are two very major events that John Glover was involved in, and he was from Marblehead. And we went to the old cemetery, the old burying ground, or the old burying hill, it's called. And it is. It's way up on a hill. And we went there. And it was just an, a, a beautiful place, an interesting place. And there's a, a, a grave there, a little memorial, a tomb, I guess you could say. It's got bricks around the side. And where John Glover is laid to rest, his son is right next to him. And of course I had to take the opportunity to do some, you know, Mr. Lewis teaching there because there were some people that were wandering around and didn't seem to have a clue as to the important person that was buried right there. So I had to, I had to let them know. And they did say at least that they appreciated it. I don't know if they appreciated my history lesson, but they said they did. And then we also got a chance to drive by his house in Marblehead, which took us a little while to find because there was also a farmhouse. Anyway, we found it there, again. There's a branch there. We found it and we uh, we got to uh, to see his house, which somebody lives in. It's just on a regular street there. So we took a quick picture and moved on. But anyway, uh, it's got a plaque out front that, that shows that that's John Glover's house. So look up John Glover, learn more about him. Uh, there is a statue of him in Boston right there. Um, right, I don't know if it's technically on Boston Common or next to Boston Common. We will find out soon again. There's a branch there. We'll find out soon when we go to Boston because we're going to be heading to Boston tomorrow. Anyway, it's been a, a great visit to Salem and some interesting things that we got to see and we got to learn. And of course, one of the most tragic events in American history. And uh, we'll talk to you later.